Okay, who's this? This is Saiful Saipul from Indonesia. Okay, I can't Saipul uh, Saipul. Um, okay, D4, D5. No uh, strange gambit or Indian. Oh, the Chagoran defense. <laughs> Let's see. I haven't uh, played this in a long time. Hmm, what do you do? Let's see, if he takes the pawn, can you can gather it up with queen to a4, I think. He can't push the pawn to defend it. He'd move the knight to defend it, not so easily. He could develop the bishop to defend it, and then you could pile up more pressure. So I think you can ignore that for one move. And then... Um, defend here and he can take the knight in fact they often do okay but he decides not to how about if I just develop the other knight <clears throat> now that that pawn is defended now and I'm allowing him to damage my pawns over here. That's funny, he's choosing not to do that. Um, yeah, I think the idea with the Chagorin defense is to give up the, the bishop for the knight and play with knights, knights against bishops. Two knights against a, a bishop and a knight. Um, so what to do now? Let's go ahead and take. I want to, um, since he hasn't bothered to take my knight, I'm going to go ahead and defend it with the bishop. Just wanted to get this knight out on c3 first, so that, uh, uh, let's see, so I can't castle right away. I need to pause to defend my knight. Well, look, we'll look it up at the, uh, in the postmortem to see what, uh, how that opening should have gone. I think uh, probably both of us made our share of mistakes <laughs> in that, in that sequence there. Okay, I'm going to kick his bishop next. Which one? Which bishop to kick? <laughs> There's so many. Start with this one. Because a bishop here. Oh, he didn't take. <laughs> I was going to assume he was going to take. Okay, let's kick this bishop next. He retreated again. Ah, it's very interesting play. Not typical of the Chigorin at all. So if I play b4, b5, and the knight moves, and then I play a4, and then I can develop the bishop here on this diagonal. Because this seems has been, this diagonal, it seems has been clamped down. So the b4, he doesn't have to move his knights right away. He can leave them there. He might even play. a6, but I could push on with b5 anyway. Okay. I suppose I could just go bishop b7. Oh, so now he's got ideas here. He wants to push this pawn forward with a tempo on my queen. Not a bad idea. Let's see, if I go here, though... Okay, now he's pausing to think. Oh, he take, takes my knight. Okay, I was just wondering if that knight maneuver to uh, c5 was going to be interesting, but he decided to just trade that knight off. 
So now bishop b2 looks interesting, right? I could line up like this and push this pawn forward with the threat of bait there. Don't have to go through the trouble of pushing these pawns forward and developing the bishop out to a3. So he brings his queen over. And um, what's that? Well, he's got good control of this... Um, of the e5 square with his knight, his bishop, and his queen all looking at e5. Okay, now he's going to bring that knight to uh, d5, hitting my queen. So let's drop back here. Maybe I can bring a rook to the e-file and push the e-pawn forward to e4. As a way of trying to I get rid of this blockade by the knight. e4 now. Pawn takes, bishop takes. Yes, yeah, playable. Oh, no, no, he's, his bishop is there. So I need the rook here, right? So e4, pawn takes, bishop takes, bishop takes, rook takes. Now I'm still not getting rid of his knight. His knight is going to be a fixture there. This will open up a, a diagonal over here for my dark squared bishop, though. Yeah, he just traded it all off. So now I could double on the e file and play knight to um, ninety-five. He can play bishop to f four or knight to f four. Maybe that's what he's thinking of. Whether he'd rather have a bishop there or a knight there, or neither. Just have to be aware of that. So I'm still going to double here and, and get my knight to. Uh, Knight to e5. Okay, he stopped my knight from going to that square, but I was going, I was heading for this square anyway. And anyway, that shuts down funny business on this diagonal. Now we can't put anything on f5, for the moment at least, maybe after g5. And, um, you know, maybe I can maneuver my queen over here. Say queen uh, e2 to g4, looking at um, knight g6, looking at the g7 pawn, looking at bishop c1, and hitting the h pawn, that kind of stuff. Ah, and so he's defending that from the side. preparing things, so I want to be able to lift up my queen to uh, d3. I decided I like that route better than e2. Well, either d3 or e2, he runs into knight f4, but with the bishop here, it's it's helping to control that f4 square. Yeah, queen e2, he had knight, well, uh, now the bishop has moved. Queen e2, he has knight c3. So queen goes to d3. And then just across here to the G file, maybe I can bring the rook over too. Gang up. My knight is pinned though, so I have to be a little careful. Maybe queen g6. Queen takes, knight takes. Is that anything? It's the rook. It's not. <clears throat> Doesn't appear to be a whole lot anyway. Mm, okay, he's piled up on um, f2. Queen g3 defends f2. Okay, so we unpinned. 
unpinned immediately. So I can play, no, I, yeah, I can't. I can't play queen g6 <laughs> because the king is on that. I need one more piece. Rook g6. Of course, after rook g6, his queen would just move, I guess. And I could go this far, though. Maybe his queen won't have many good squares to go to. And maybe I could bring the other rook in. Just pile up on that g-file. The knight. The knight is holding back his dangerous bishop on this diagonal. I <laughs> have to be careful with that. So bishop takes, rook takes. Is still holding, I guess. So after rip to g6, the queen, where does it go? It could go to f. Yeah, so he went there right away. Goes to f5. So now what? Isn't the king close to being mated? <laughs> Not quite. Not quite. So knight g6, he just uh, takes my queen, so that doesn't help. If I go queen h4 here, he could play g5, and I could take it with the bishop because there's a pin on the h file. And now maybe I am threatening knight to uh, knight to g6. Yeah, tricky, a tricky position. Also, rook g6 is interesting because then I'd have three pieces on h6, and I could sacrifice there. Say rook g6, bishop takes, pawn takes, queen takes his mate. So he goes that way. So g6 is defended. And h7 is defended. Is there something else here? More wood on the fire. <laughs> no, that, that rook is defended back there. I was thinking maybe I could distract his rook and... Get something going. Okay, so knight here, rook takes, rook takes, queen takes. Doesn't look like anything. How do I make progress here? Hmm. Now oh, I'm, I'm moving too slow. Well, it's a tough position. Rook here, rook takes, knight takes. Yeah, I, I just don't have enough force. Ah, the pawn. That's one way to make progress. Push the pawn forward. H4, H5. He could bring his queen to the back rank. He could play queen on um, b1, but then I could bring my rook back. Yeah, I did that. I wonder if he will go for a repetition here. <laughs> Bishop is kind of pinned now. Oh, now he takes. I see. This is um, two pieces for a queen. And 
knight f7 hits the bishop he just takes ah uh, because uh <clears throat> because my rook is overloaded so i have to take with a pawn couldn't take with the rook because it would hang my bishop and he gets a check Okay, attacks my rook. Let's, um, hmm, I see. He's attacking the rook and the pawn and the bishop, all three. <laughs> it's making life difficult. <laughs> yeah, he's running low on time, too. Yeah, well, it was a tough position. Oh, he got his move in. Okay, let's take. Takes there with check. Let's go to the corner, I guess. Okay, and I won on time. Anyway, it was an interesting game. I will upload this and do a postmortem. See you guys later.